Hello, this is Jacob from the Gitly team and in this video I want to give some background for whoever's reviewing my merge request uh, with the pack file analyzer about what's going on here. So this uh, merge request adds um, some subcommands to Gitly, deba Gitly debug that print metadata that you can find in a uh, pack file bitmap file and um, I created these uh, I created this code because th I could find very little uh, out there that could tell me what is actually going on inside a bitmap file so first let's look at what this bitmap file is uh, there's documentation in the git repository where there's a file about the bitmap format that explains what is in the dot bitmap file um, right so what's the dot bitmap file and here I have a um, uh, check out of GitLab, uh, a clone of GitLab Community Edition, and if we look in the objects directory, then uh, we have a pack file, an IDX file, and a bitmap file. The bitmap file wasn't there. Uh, the bitmap, bitmap file isn't there if you do a clone. I had to create it with uh, git repack, and it's uh, something we use on the server side in GitLab to accelerate, to, to make clones perform better. So I wanted to understand what is actually in this bitmap file and this thing on the left here is all I had. So this is a description of the file format. So what does it say? There's a header, there's some flags, um, there is a number of entries, bitmap commits um, in the header. Then there are four bitmaps that uh, provide information about the types of the objects in the back file. And then this number of these entries that were mentioned before start. And uh, each of these entries is a bitmap that contains information about which objects are reachable from that particular commit. And then at the end of the file, there's an optional section with the name hash cache or the so-called bitmap hash cache which is an optimization for delta com uh, to help with delta compression. Um, I didn't look into this because it's... Um, I Why didn't I look into this? Because I was more interested in uh, the reachability than in delta compression. Also, this thing is off by default. <coughs> so... Um, why do we need this information in the first place? Well, a back file is just a stream of Git objects with uh, length prefixes. So if you want to find an object in a back file, you need to start at the beginning of the back file and then uh, jump from one object to, to the next until you found the thing you were looking for. So uh, that, that's actually a very horrible way to find, uh, find objects. So a back file on its own is pretty much useless without an IDX file, which contains a list of all the object identifiers, the git shas of all the objects in the corresponding pack in alphabetical order so that you can do a binary search on them. And then once you found an object ID, it gives you an offset inside the pack file so that you can just jump straight to the file you want, to the object you want and start reading it. So this thing gives you, ra th this is sequential, and this gives you random access. Um, also, this thing doesn't even contain a list of the object IDs that are in there. You have to compute them by reading out object IDs and computing their SHA. Uh, this does give you a list of object IDs. So this file is, is essential. You can't do anything useful without this one. And this file will always be there. When you do a clone, Git, uh, the Git server sends you this file and your client generates this thing on the fly and stores the two together. So the bitmap is a third file that is optional, that contains information that is not in these two. So uh, the first type of information that's in there, if we start from the top of the bitmap file, are the type indexes. So the index file tells you where each object is in the pack file. It doesn't tell you what type it is. It doesn't tell you if... So if I have an object ID... Um, let's see... Uh, So here are some object IDs. What is this? Is this a commit? Is this a blob? Is this a tag? Is this a tree? I don't know. Uh, is it Superman? No. Um, 
So you can you can only find out what the type is of this object by first looking this thing up in the index and then opening the back file and going to the offset and then reading the first couple well really the first bytes of the object to see the type and uh, that means you need um, it, that is not ideal if you want to know the type of a lot of objects because you need to then read at lots of random different positions in a back file um, and that is bad because that all has to get paged in from disk by the operating system. And just for more context, these files are uh, very different in size. The pack file, this is a clone of GitLab CE, is about 600 megabytes. The index is 41 megabytes. That's still a lot, but it's a lot less. And the bitmap is only 2.7 megabytes. So ideally, if you want to find out metadata about objects, you don't want to load 600 megabytes into memory, um, be it all at once or by jumping all over the place and forcing it to be paged in. So that, that's where the type index can be uh, helpful because you can, uh, if you have the index file and you have an object ID, you can um, find the type, uh, you, you can use these two files pretty much, so the IDX file and the bitmap file to go from an object ID to the object type without having to look in the back file. That is what the, these four bitmaps at the head of the, the, the type indexes are for. Now, um, and then, the <clears throat> so that's that. And then there's the bitmap commits. And this is something that um, I never really understood, which is because I always thought the bitmap is about reachability. And I, examined, I imagined it as a sort of matrix of all objects. Uh, if, like for, for any two given objects in the pack, you can see if one is reachable from uh, from the other, and that is not what the that is not the information you get when the bitmap is created. Git uses a heuristic that I don't fully understand to select a small number of commits as bitmap commits, or what they call uh, indexed commits here, and uh, you get. Uh, what would what would have been a single row of the matrix so um, for that one commit. So you take that commit and then you look over the entire pack file and you put a one for every object. Um, well, you imagine the entire pack file as all, all the list of objects in the pack file in pack file order as a long list of bits and uh, the bits will be one if that particular object is reachable and zero if it's not reachable. So that is what this is in one reachability bitmap for a single commit. So there, there's a bunch of those in uh, in the bitmap file. And one of the questions uh, I had is like, what are these commits? And it's a bit of a, a letdown because in the end, I don't have a good answer of what these commits are, how they're selected, or if they're interesting, how, how or why they're interesting. But at least we can find these commits uh, with the, the tool I wrote. And uh, we can also see this type map because, um, well, it was it was a good exercise. It was easier to see if I was parsing the file correctly by parsing this stuff and comparing it with the output of Git Verify Pack, um, and to see if I got it right and if I got the bitmap uh, parsing code right because the bitmaps are compressed, so uh, we had to write code that decompresses them. So that's the two types of information here. And if we, uh, let's see, I'm in the wrong directory. Uh, right, because the debugger's up there. Let's see, so I want to have the normal path, and then I want to have this directory. Can I run the debug now? Yes. So the new subcommands are the four at the bottom here. And the first one is just, uh, the first one, the first two are based on the type index. So they list the context, the contents of the pack file, and they uh, uh, together with the object types. And um, there, there is another way to list the context of a back, contents of a back file that's used to git show index command. The, there, there's, so there's another complication here. The IDX file, 
the, the, the back file has its own special order for the objects, which is um, secret sauce of git back objects. And I think it is designed to optimize the access patterns so that you have more uh, page cache hits. So f for all intensive purposes, this order is somewhat, it's special and it's not, you cannot predict a priori what this uh, order looks like. You need to know what the repo looks like. For instance, the, uh, the most recent branch, so it, the branch commits, the branch heads are at the, at the start of the back file and then I think they're ordered by how new they are or something uh, something specific like that. So unless you know what the branch heads were, you don't even know what to expect in this file. The IDX file is very different because it is ordered alphabetically by object ID. Um, and uh, so that, that has a very predictable structure. You don't need to know anything about the objects to understand that this, whether this, um, how this file is structured. And the funny thing about the bitmap is that, uh, so the bitmap talks about reachability and about objects in the pack file. And for the most part, it uses the pack file order. So um, the, that, that's the sort of the perspective that the bitmap format, the bitmap file has on the, on the pack, on the packed objects. It looks at them in, in back file order. So this thing, uh, this subcommand will print the objects in the back, um, in the back file order along with the object types. So let's try that. And I'm going to run it in a separate uh, window. Uh, well, this bit map back. And oh, that, that's not going to work. I need to um, I want to take this and this IDX file and run that. This takes a moment because we're actually looking at a fairly big uh, fairly big pack file. This is 600 megabytes if you may remember and I can already tell you that there are about 1.5 million objects in here so uh, the index has 1.5 million entries. The bitmaps, each bitmap in the bitmap file has 1.5 million bits uh, or up to 1.5 million. And um, this tool is now printing 1.5 million lines. And uh, this text editor is not very fast. So just the act of printing 1.5 million lines is a little slow. The, so actually running this command is faster than um, the, the bottleneck, the, this command is now bottlenecked by my text editor. It's like it's running at full CPU. We're in the 1.1 million now, so 1.2 million, getting there, 1.3. Actually, that's the wrong number. That is the, uh, that is the pack file offset. And uh, we need to reach 600 megabytes. So this was not a good idea. I want to shut this window. Um, and run this into a file instead. That's going to be much faster. I uh, want to run that into um, list bitmap pack dot txt. So that only took seven seconds. And this is what you get in that file. Um, the important thing, so what you're seeing here is uh, commit ID, uh, object ID, object type, and byte offset in the .pack file. And this file is, li is sorted by uh, byte offset, so this is the pack file order. Um, yeah, and for comparison, uh, there's an Actually, I'm not going to do that now uh, because I want to move on. But you, there, you can do the same. You can get more or less the same uh, output with Git, Git Verify Pack. Uh, but on this computer, that will take over a minute to compute the roughly the same output we have here compared with uh, seven seconds for this. And seven seconds is not the optimal output when using the bitmap because the 
uh, the implementation in Gizli Debug is naive, is simplified, so you could make it even more performant. Okay, so this is the first subcommand. So I wanted to show what this does. Um, the gimmick is you get this list of object IDs combined with the object types. Here it says commit, but if I scroll down for a while, if I use search, I can find a blob or a tree. Um, so this information in this column is the this is what you get from the first part of the bitmap and uh, there's a second sub command that i made which um, prints the same information roughly but in a more uh, sort of as a visualization um, did i do that right yes um, and i want to put this into a file named after this. Okay, there we go. So this is a, a funny visualization I made where uh, we're not printing the object IDs or the offsets and just object types. And for visual distinctiveness, I chose four letters. So capital C for commit, little e for tree, big T for tag, and little b for blob. And um, so here you see that the pack file starts with a whole lot of commits. And then there's the tags, and then there's more commits. And then it takes a while before we find uh, the first tree. And there's this lone tag here. I don't know why. Um, then a whole lot of trees that also got selected for some special reason before we ever get to blobs. So now we see some blobs and we see alternating between blobs and trees. Why? Well, this is the uh, dark art of uh, what goes on in git pack objects. So, if you want to see the structure, uh, th th this subcommand that you see, this structure, uh, gives you this visualization of the structure. Now, the third subcommand lists the actual entries, the, the bitmap, the indexed commits. And for this, I want to use a different repo because um, doing this on GitLab CE is a little slow. It's a very big repo with the 1.5 million commits. So let's get a uh, GitLab repo. And uh, let's see, GitLab debug. Ah. So now we don't have a, pack, a bitmap. I was talking about this, so I need to do a repack. The command I'm running here, if I can find it. Uh, A means everything, D means delete pack files or delete object uh, files that are no longer needed after you created a new one, and B means create a bitmap. And so here we can see that I think it selected 142 bitmap commits, and that is way less than the number of commits uh, in the repository. And um, well, here's an, that's a nice question: like, how many commits are there in the repository? Well, because we have everything packed into one file, we can answer the question of how many commits there are by looking just at this pack file. And we know that object types are contained in bitmap. So if I want to know how many commits there are, I need to do git lead debug, come on, without the typo. I want to use this one on the IDX file. And then I want to count the word commits. Apparently there are 3,700 commits in this back file. That seems low. It seems like a low number. Is that right? We have statistics on the project. Yeah, 3,000 commits. Okay. So that's the number of commits here. So um, in the in this clone. But then if we look at the bitmap commits, we're going to get a smaller number. And I'm going to put this in a text file. So 
So it's much faster on a small repo like this, only 200 milliseconds. Um, so what's in here? I clicked the wrong button. 143 lines. And here it said 142 commits, and this first line is a comment, so that checks out. There are 142 bitmap commits. And what, um, so what are these? Uh, let's see, log dash one dash is pretty. This looks like it's a branch and it is a commit from today. So it looks like this thing selects uh, recent commits. If we do git log dash one dash is pretty on this one. Then I copy pasted the wrong commit. Go on. There we go. This is a commit from yesterday. So it, it I think this um, this is we can probably can probably even script this. Um but I don't feel up to uh, scripting that live. But you can you can look at these commits uh, like this. Um now Let's see, so what is, um, the, the, and so the, that's the third piece of information, git lead debug. So we get the bitmap commits, and then the final, the fourth piece of information is that you can select one of these commits and get all the objects that are reachable from it. Um, so let's see, uh, if we take something at the bottom, what is this? That is a commit from 2016. Um, so what is reachable from that commit? That's probably going to be interesting because I suspect that this is a short list of things. So that was the commit ID and the pack. Uh, this would be objects pack ID X. That is still quite a lot of stuff that is reachable. So, well, um, here we see the output of the, find, uh, the four subcommands. So we have a comment here reminding us what pack we're looking at and what the commit is that we supplied on the command line. So that was 0ED3. Here you go, 0ED3. Well, apparently it is the first object in the pack file that is reachable from itself. And then there's a bunch of more, bunch more commits and some trees. Blobs. This list is pretty short. Let's count how big this is. That's 176 uh, lines minus two headers. So that means 174 objects. And the total number of objects, did I count that? No, but if I do git lead debug, um, if I run list bitmap back on the index file. And we count that. Then there are 30,000 objects. So that last uh, commit in the list only has 174. Was it 174? Yes, 174 out of 30,000 objects uh, that are reachable from it. So this is the sort of information that is in a bitmap file and um, how you can get it out with the git lead debug tool. And um, yeah, I think that is the, um, I think that is all I wanted to show in this video. So thanks for watching.